All right, guys, today I am going to be showcasing using a Thai Scrapper to kill um, Gate 3 of Kakul. Uh, this Scrapper in question is Full Swift with a crit on the necklace. I'm using a slightly unconventional build um, that I built for a little under 30k at the time, which is Thai, Keen Blunt, um, Precise Dagger, Adrenaline, and Ambush Master. Um, we're pushing close to 1500 gear score here. Um, the video starts a little bit late because bingo gets a little sloppy So the recording went a little long, but let's go ahead and jump right in uh, first things first You'll see with where uh, Tattle is about to go in for the first Mario um, He's positioned a little bit wrong for the flames You really want to ensure that you're standing near the outside of the flame just because it's more consistent meter gain But we'll get to see a better example of this when we get to my Mario phase itself so let's go ahead and start this and jump right into it. Um, so first things here, as a scrapper, your job is typically, again, you're mainly just focusing on stagger um, and staying on the boss. You're going to help with the doll as you can, um, but typically the circus balls, you'll want to leave those to the um, range DPS in your party if you have any. If not, you're just constantly waiting for the... Um, for the debuff around the balls to go down before you jump in with the Dragon Advent um, or one of your other ranged abilities. One of the other things here you're going to notice is when you go through the saws, these saws that spawn in 2 and 4 um, are typically uh, faster than the ones that you're going to be seeing on 1, 3, and 5. Um, so it's really important that you're heading more towards the center um, as you go running through these saws. As if you're running too far south, you risk having a saw, a saw spawn on you um, and end up killing you. Um, so you'll see here we typically, again, we're running up towards the middle to avoid any situation like that where we're having a saw spawn on us. You're going to go ahead and stagger. Whenever you stagger, his back is always focused towards this 12 o'clock position. And you're going to see we're going to be able to kind of push this fairly quickly here right into the next phase. And do, do, do. these are all these are all alts in this run, but our alts are still pretty well geared, so um, we're still having pretty solid comp or solid comp. Um, right here, you gotta avoid the the hooks. Most important, um, more so in these early parts of this fight, it's more about actually just staying alive rather than it is about trying to really push damage aggressively. Um, during the phases that aren't Mario. It's mainly, again, you just want to ensure that you're clearing circus balls and that you're clearing the doll before any of the Mario um, phases start where someone's in the Iron Maiden, just because having either balls or the um, the flame totem still on, on the map um, just really increases the chaos and the amount of meter gain um, that you're getting as it occurs. So you see here again, still want to stay at 12 o'clock. That's the best place to start because he's going to turn his back there to you and that's where you're actually going to get your opportunity to back attack. Uh, Scrapper's in a really good position here because Scrapper can actually solo stagger without even using a whirlwind bomb. Um, as long as you're using a couple overwhelm runes on battering fists and either critical blow or death rattle, your preference. Um, in, this, in this case, I just happen to be using critical blow. Um, I have the tripods and everything for both critical blow and death rattle, so I'll just kind of use whatever I'm feeling like at the time. So, uh, as you see here, when you get when I get the reverse curse, I should have stayed in the flames a little bit longer. Um, I tried to, but I ended up just missing the tick. Um, you typically want to get the burning on you to where you want to be staying in the fire until your burning debuff lines up with the amount of time left on your curse. Um, the burning debuff when you first pick it up lasts for four seconds. So at about the four second mark on your curse is typically when you step out, unless you have to step out sooner because your life is already too low. Um, so you see here, we just gotta get a few more bars until we're gonna push into showtime. We're gonna go ahead and, um, we ended up getting a good stagger here, which ends up pushing us through. Um, most important things for um, showtime when you get here, is at the very beginning of this, you really want to be getting spread out. Um, anyone who has the crosshairs on them, it's it's important that they are dropping these um, on the outer edge of the map. So you see these crosshair markers on us. Wherever these um, drop, it's going to drop a 
a fire pool on the ground that will slow you. Um, in our case, we're going to end up using Inanna um, Esther, which is going to uh, give us protection from the slow, and it's also going to give us, uh, it's going to constantly uh, tick down our meter, and then uh, give us some damage reduction as well as a heal at the very end. Um, so it's not as important that we're dropping him outside, but if you are in a party that is uh, maybe has a little bit less damage and they're trying to use Nineveh or save way for one of the later Mario phases, then um, it's important that you drop these on the outer edge. So you're going to see here, we're just kind of running in a circle. Um, we got to get back in here. So he's spinning in this one direction. After three attacks, he's going to change directions here, right here in the center. Here he goes, changing directions. And then from here, the next thing that he's going to do is he's, he's going to spawn a bomb um, somewhere on the map here, whether it is, it can be any position. Everyone needs to be on the lookout for them. You ping the bomb if you see it. Everyone's going to stack on that side so that he targets the one bomb. Whenever the bomb is targeted, um, he's then going to change the direction to the other side afterwards for the second bomb. Um, so you want to make sure he's going to blow up the first bomb. You go to the other side. You get him to blow up the second one. You get out of this as well. Um, for the person who is Mario 3, um, you want to try to build a little bit of meter here. Um, just so that when showtime ends, because the next Mario goes in at 80 bars, if you already have enough uh, meter ahead of time, the party doesn't have to slow DPS. Um, here, so you see, that's why I purposely went out there to grab some meter, because I'm Mario 3. In this case, we're all going counterclockwise. We're going to run in a circle. If you have someone in the party who's a little bit slower um, and their ball is getting out of the way, they can run either the opposite direction or run on their own uh, inner path or stack at a different part in the party or in the group. I'm going to see here, there's going to be circles that are going to spawn. Um, the counters that are here that he has, um, if he's jumping on his ball and you miss that counter, it is very important that you kind of run away as far as you can and get maximum range from him. Um, it does a very significant amount of damage and he moves fairly quickly. Um, so the earlier you can create distance, the better off you are to not end up taking a lot of meter or damage from him. Um, the second counter, the one that I ended up hitting, if you do end up missing that counter, it has a giant um, back explosion that comes out afterwards. So it's important to uh, wait before you go and chase forward to him. Um, in this case, I ended up hitting it. I'm going to build a little tiny bit of meter off the balls because I'm about to go in. I don't want to get too much because it's important that you don't turn until after the flame totem spawns. You're going to see here that I'm going to stand near the outer edge of the flame so that I can get more consistent um, meter gain. You make sure that you cue the totem um, in order to debuff it so that it's taking um, full damage from the party. You throw a present down with E if there's anyone in the party that has meter that needs to be removed. Um, and then it's very important that you uh, make sure that you use a pot before you go to the center because it's, you know, being uh, as close to full life as possible is very helpful to ensure that you're making it properly through the phase. And then you want to make sure that you don't stand in the center until the portal actually opens because if you go in there before it opens, then it's going to end up um, giving you some damage. So for the Mario here, you basically want to start jumping as soon as the blue ball there uh, lands. Same with here. You're going to see a little bit of mistakes, but this shows that you can work through it. As long as you go in there with full health, you can uh, get hit by a couple bombs. Not the end of the world. Here, um, if you are jumping, you are immune. So you're going to see here, I'm going to wait for this other one to pass just because I was having my timing was slightly off with jumping through the bombs. So I'm going to purposely get hit by that. You're going to go ahead and jump by this guy. Um, here, we're going to go ahead and move through. This is pretty much the worst case scenario um, bombs that you can possibly get where they're coming from left to right on this lower direction because it actually means that you actually have to be making your jumps over them. And if you're messing up the jumps, like in my case, you're going to end up taking a lot of damage. Um, so this last platform here, or the last one, you're going to see the timer is extremely... Um, close on this one but when you get to this last platform um, all you need to do is just hit the jump button stand here near the very edge hit the jump button five times and then just 
spam your G button in order to leave. The only exception to this from our tests is that we were seeing if there is 18 seconds left on the bar, um, you can land yourself in a scenario where you're going to end up landing perfectly between the three mobs that are near the gate and they will they have a chance to either chain stun you or hit you for a ton of damage before you can kill them and get through the gate. So if you do end up finding yourself in that position, just wait a couple seconds before you go and then they won't be on the teleporter when you get there. We're going to see just how close to what this one actually was. <laughs> You'll see here I literally got here with under one second remaining as I get through the gate but it was still enough. So we're gonna come back in. We're gonna have, it looks like some lines coming through uh, at a rapid speed for whatever reason. So you wanna make sure that you don't kill the um, fire totem whenever it spawns. Um, whenever you start to see the boss start to do the portal phase um, and spawn the fire totem, it's important you start to hold DPS a little bit to ensure the, the grotesque doll is not directly under the boss. Um, I've seen plenty of times where the grotesque doll gets bursted down um, before the person who gets Mario can even um, get their meter built up. So it's important that you hold DPS just to ensure that the person gets turned first, wait for them to turn um, or tell you they're turned and then or let you know that they have used the Q ability on the thing and then you go ahead and kill it. Keep everything clear. I made a mistake here, got myself hit by the all the pigeons. Um, but luckily I was able to tank right through it. So, uh, you'll see we get a little bit greedier with our health here just because he likes to use the curse a little bit more often. So you can more comfortably leave your health, um, near 50% more often just because there's a chance he's going to end up doing the thing. You'll see here, he, he keeps his distance before I hit the, uh, lever here. Cause as soon as I hit the lever in this kind of fairly large AOE range. It's going to stun everyone that is nearby. It's going to have me do the typing test and then I'm going to have to uh, pull the lever once more and then I can start staggering. He still has a debuff to stagger until the second one gets pulled as well. So you'll see Rain pulls the second one as well. We end up going right through the stagger fairly quickly. And then uh, Tattle comes back as well. And right there okay bard finished the mario we're gonna, gonna go ahead and go through if you do end up getting mario 4 in your party um the best advice i can give you is to basically just try to focus on going as far right as possible you can avoid the most dangerous platforms that are there if you're just staying on the right and you can avoid having to deal with the bullets that i was failing on on gate three so you'll see here with the curse um, again, I push myself in the flames. I stand in there until the debuff timer lines up with the curse itself so that they're falling off at roughly the same time. So that gives me the maximum amount of HP I can get as it ends. Right here, he's doing clown face, which for every stack, which is every single person who has um, turned in, every time someone has turned into a jester, um, he's going to deal damage to us. Um, the Inanna that we used at 90 bars lowered this meter back down to zero. So now it's at two again from Mario 3 and Mario 4. So you see he's gonna hit us a couple times here and he's gonna swap his, his buff now to the other one, to the opposite, which I believe is he does 10% more damage now. And we're gonna go ahead and try to stay out of those. Those um, burning, the burning he does, does actually deal quite a significant amount of damage. So if you end up with too many burning stacks, it's important that you use panaceas. Um, to kind of clear that out. I made a little bit of a mistake there, but we ended up getting through here. So here is where the bingo phase begins. Um, I highly recommend if you do have a second monitor or someone in the party has a second monitor, then you use um, one of the bingo calculators for these first uh, early clears that you're going through. Um, they just highly increase the uh they highly lower the amount of thinking required in order to kind of get through these um so with the bingo mechanic the as you see the board here um for most pugs and everyone else it's going to be similar to like a chess board in terms of it's going to be quad it's going to have quadrants so you'll have like this is going to be your 
your um, A column, B, C, D, and E. So the, the tile that's at the six o'clock position um, would be E1, and then the tile at the 12 o'clock position would be A5, and then this one over here again would be A1, and this one would be E5 over here. So uh, you'll hear quadrants that'll get called out from time to time, and then other people will just ping the best spot. So whenever someone gets a bomb and they drop it in a location, it is going to um, change in a cross pattern. It's going to change whatever the tile is. Um, so in this case, these are skulls. If we were to drop a bomb on this center, center spot that is empty, all three of these in this line would turn into skulls and these would flip back to normal tiles. The um, gimmick for finishing this boss is if you get a bingo on the third bomb that you drop, it will give you a protection um, bubble from a large attack that he does, and it will also hit him for 10 bars of damage. So it is possible to go through this entire phase as just a support, um, purely using the bingo mechanic. So you're going to see here, we already had a pre-planned location for the bomb, which in this case was A3. So we're going to go ahead and drop the bomb there. As soon as you see the marker come off of your head, you go ahead and leave. Um, again, because of the fact that the bingo mechanic is doing a lot of the damage in this phase, um, it is more important than anything else is actually just surviving and maintaining your meter and your health, um, waiting for the bombs to come out. You see we pinged on the location for where the next bomb was supposed to go. The next bomb ends up going to the location where it's supposed to go there in the corner. He ends up getting it dropped, which is going to set us in position to um, do a bingo on our third bomb here. The third bomb is going to end up going here to D1 to finish this lower row. You'll see the hammers are coming by. You want to ensure you stay out of those or you will get instantly killed. Um, that is a fear mechanic, a Medusa mechanic. So if you see him start to do that, you can look away. Um, I get the bomb to the right location just in time through the fear. If you do see someone with the fear on them um, that ends up getting that in your party, uh, this is where you can use the sacred bombs. You see them on my bar. You don't really, you don't really use them that often. You use them in basically situations where someone's going to die if they don't get out of the CC they're in. So this is the mechanic we're talking about where he's going to end up taking 10 bars of damage because of the bingo that we made and we're also protected from damage. This is a good burst window, so any um, burst class like Ignite Sork, Surge Blade, etc. Um, will be able to pump a significant amount of damage here. Inanna can always be um, held at any time um, in order to um, save yourself in case of a failed bingo. So you see in this situation, the place where I wanted to drop the bomb was A5, but because of the hammer spawns that occurred, I was unable to drop the bomb in the ideal position. I ended up dropping the bomb in nearly the worst case scenario. Um, best case would have been actually getting it placed over here near the edge, just so that it didn't clear up as hit as much space. You'll see here, this is fairly catastrophic, but we worked through it. So I had a bomb that was basically worst case scenario that ended up um, making the board quite messy here for uh, just a second. Um, so it ended up flipping five tiles. We just kind of end up needing to sit here for a bit, uh, maintain our meter, and um, just basically wait for the bomb spawns again and avoid the hammers and just avoid dying. Um, Tattle's taking a little bit of damage. We don't really have much else we can do because of the amount of um, skull tiles on the map. Um, you either want to space bar over them so you don't get meter gain, um, you know, or just, uh, you know, ensure that you're not going too high on meter. I end up getting feared with arrows on here, which is not ideal. I think our almost in, almost our entire team ends up getting turned here. Things get very sloppy and chaotic because of that one bad bomb drop. This last bomb here gets dropped in the proper position to complete a bingo. The board's still a bit messy, but we get a chance to get it cleared up here. Um, you can see here again, as long as you don't panic, you can kind of work through even um, non-ideal scenarios where, again, we ended up getting um, quite a messy board where it's really hard to maneuver about. I can't even attack him here because if I stand on that, I'm going to get meter. 
So I have to use attacks from slightly off the board. Um, you'll see here, uh, Sheehan ends up still placing the bomb over there, which is going to clean up the board quite a bit. It's going to help here a bit. Um, from here, you know, we can actually space bar in. I get meter again as well. I'm just going to keep my distance so that I don't hit him. You can still cue him a little bit for a tiny bit of damage. I ended up accidentally uh, backstepping into that. This is the good position for a bomb here. This is going to clear up um, quite a bit of the board from the mistake that was made prior. So it's going to open up the center of the board again for me here. So I actually have quite a bit of movement and can, I can actually maneuver myself around here now. And then we're going to go ahead and get popped there. So the next bomb uh, recommended position is going to be here again, C5. This is going to start to fill that row. And one of the things that um, can also be done for a bingo, you can get basically five in a row in a straight line or five in a row diagonally as well. Um, the diagonal is one that is less intuitive. Um, definitely harder to set it up, but it's something that comes up in these um, later versions of the fight where the board gets a little bit chaotic and um, things are a little bit more messy. We end up um, holding Inanna here, um, or we end up using... I believe we end up using Nineveh anyways, um, but Nineveh does only five bars in this mode um, because of the debuff or because of the shield that he gets here. He takes less damage because of things. Um, you'll see that she, and again, he used a space bar in order to get in the corner to place the bomb to that position, um, which again, opened up a little bit more space for us. And then he just space barred back as well. We're just, again, in this position, you're just really trying to ensure you get the bomb in the right spot and that you are space barring when you need to. Um, trying to limit your meter as much as you can. Um, hammers went out. I got a little bit uh, greedy there with the dragon advent there because sometimes with these jumping attacks, it does kind of change your hitbox a little bit. You'll see issues on Vault and things like that sometimes if you use that attack while he's doing like a front back front. Um, so you'll see here this last bomb position here is going to do this diagonal bingo right across the middle because it's going to hit these three tiles here. The red tiles are already locked in so they won't change. We end up throwing the Nineveh anyways. It doesn't matter. The last bingo here gets done diagonally and he, Cockwell Sidon, basically ends up killing himself because of the bingo mechanic. So it seems to just basically reflect his damage back at him. So he blends up blowing himself up. And, uh, yeah, a bit sloppy, but scrapper movement on Ty, um, all the different leaps and jumps that you have, um, it makes it very uh, solid for actually transgressing the map and getting around. And then uh, you see here I ended up getting uh, doing not too bad. On Scrapper, uh, I think we are all pretty close in eye level here, but uh, Scrapper has some really nice uptime compared to some of the other things. They're dealing with orbs a little bit more than I am, so they have other mechanics they're dealing with, but uh, things ended up working out. Um, yeah, other than that, if you have any questions, I will post the build down below. And if you have any other questions or have any other fights you'd like to have covered or have any questions about, let me know in the comments down below and I will get it covered in a video. Have a good one.